yourself how to do it now. I, I've, I've been doing it all along. Just when he comes, then he just does it and I don't have to think about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Sagrajatam Sagana Rabunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam <coughs> Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shivishakan Vitam Scha Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha <coughs> Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurun Dinataranam Vancha kalpa turubhyascha, kripa sindhubhya evacha, patitanam bhavanebhyo, vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. <coughs> namo maha badanyaya, krishna prema pradayate, krishnaya krishna chaitanya, Namne Gaura Tishe Nama <coughs> Nityanandam Namastu Bhyam Premananda Pradayane Kalo Kalamashana Ashaya Janava Pataye Namaha <coughs> Ajanu Lambita Bujo Kanaka Vadato Sam Kirtanaika Pitaro Kamalaya Taksho Vishvambaro Dvijavaro Yuga Dharma Palo Pande Jagat Priyakaro Karunavataro <coughs> Panchatadvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam <coughs> he Krishna Karna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye <coughs> Jayatam Suruto Pangor Mama Manda Materagati Matsarvasva Padam Bojo Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpadrumadha Shimadratanagar Singhasanasto Srimad Radha, Srila Govinda Devo, Preshta Libhi Sevyamano Smarami. Srimad Rasa Rasarandi, Vangshita Takstitaha, Tarshan Venu Gopinata. I hit the yeah. and it was sucking my watch. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll just uh I'll put the ringer off. Let's see. Okay. Forgot to do that. <laughs> <coughs> so, 
Karshan Venus and Ayr Gopir Gopi Nata Sri Hestunaha Bhaktya Vihina Aparad Halakshai Kshiptas Chakamadi Tarangamadhye Kripa Maitvam Sharanam Prapanna Vrinde Numaste Charanara Vindam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. <clears throat> First of all, <clears throat> I'm offering my unlimited Dandavat pranams and my Shuddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev <clears throat> Nityalila Prabhishta Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Gurudevs, Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnupad Paramahansa, Ashtatarasata Sri Srila, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, and Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I offer my Dandavat Pranams to the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Anuga Guru Varga and my Dandavat Pranams to all of the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavis. <clears throat> so we've come to verse eleven in this incredible. Shastra, written by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Pad Sri Vilapa Kusum Anjali. Vilapa Kusum Anjali. Vilapa means lamentation in the mood of separation called Vilapa. And Kusum Anjali means a bouquet of flowers. So this is an offering of 104 verses from Raghunath Das Goswami at the lotus feet of his Ishtadevi, uh, his Swamini, that is none other than Vrishabhananandani Srimati Radharani. So we've been reading Srila Gurudev's commentary on these verses. Again, I'm going to read the 11th verse that we are still currently on. Svapne pikim sumukite charanam bujata rajat paraga patavasa vibhushanena Shobham param patitaram ahahottamangam bibrad bhavishyatikada mamasarta nama. <clears throat> o beautiful faced one, when even in a dream will I, by decorating my head with the splendid perfumed powder from your lotus feet, 
attain the goal of my life. You can repeat the Sanskrit and the English. Svapne, Svapne. Pikim, Pikim. Sumuki, Sumuki. Te, Te. Charanam Bujata, Rajat, Paraga, Patavasa, Vibhushanena, Shobham, Param, Atitaram, Ahaho, Tamangam, Bibrad, Bavishyati, Kada, Mama, Sartanama, I'm reading it again. Swapne pikim sumukite charanam bujata rajat paraga patavasa vibhushanena shobham param atitaram ahokta mangam vibrad bhavishyati kada mama sartanama. You can repeat, O beautiful faced one. O beautiful faced one. <coughs> when? when? Even in a dream. Even in a dream. Will I? By decorating, my head by decorating my head with the splendid perfumed powder, with splendid perfumed powder from your lotus feet, from your lotus feet attain, the goal of my life. attain the goal of my life. So, we were hearing about Krishna making an attempt to decorate <laughs> Srimati Radhika. Uh, So I'm just going to read a little bit of that so we can refresh our memory. <laughs> How Krishna decorates Srimati. So at once, Tulsi Manjari, Rupa Manjari, and all the very near and dear Manjaris entered the Kunja. They came with plates in their hands, brushes, kumkum, chandan, kasturi, rose water, and pots. And Krishna thus began to decorate Srimati Radhika, because Radhika told to Krishna that you should decorate me. So he there was very happy to receive this order. And thus Krishna began to decorate Srimati Radhika. And of course all the manjaris are there. He was a very good artist, and he combed her hair, made tilak designs, and rendered many other services. Then Srimati told him, You are not a very good artist. You should decorate me from bottom to top, not top to bottom. You have inherent, you had inadvertently washed away my red lac, so you should first replace it. Krishna then took a brush and began to paint, but his hand began to tremble because of the many bhavs manifesting in him. Then Tulsi Manjari and all the other Manjaris were laughing. Shimati saw this and told Tulsi Manjari, you should do it. This new one cannot do it properly. He is quite neophyte, so you should do it. Imagine Krishna being neophyte. <laughs> Tulsi Manjari then came forward and forcibly took the pot by pushing Krishna aside with her elbow, and she was laughing. Then Srimati admonished her, admonished her, Why are you laughing? You should just paint. She put her foot on the forehead of Tulsi Manjari, the same lotus foot that Krishna had been painting and had placed on his heart. The touch of her foot on the head of this Manjari left a stamp of fresh red lac mixed with the kumkum paste which had been on the heart of Krishna and which had originally come from her. So when Tulsi Manjari began to look at herself in a mirror, at once, 
Raghunath Das Goswami came to his external consciousness just at that moment. He was loudly weeping and remembering, oh, it is very rare for Krishna and what to say of others like Brahma, Shuka, and Narad to have the mercy of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. Yet, at that time, I obtained her reddish foot lack here on my head. O Sumuki, O Sundari, beautiful one who has attracted Krishna to serve her feet, how is it possible to describe your beauty? I am praying that what to say of a direct darshan if even in dream I get the occasion to have on my head that red lack and that kunkum from your feet, then my head will be the highest part of my body. <clears throat> it will only be the highest limb if you will put your feet on my head. Only then will it be meaningful. Svapne pikim sumukite charanam bujata. Now, he is repenting, Raghunath Das Goswami is repenting, lamenting, and rolling on the banks of Radha Kunda. Rajat Paraga Patavasa. Here, the word Paraga means the pollen of the lotus flower. Your feet are like lotus flowers. Vibhushanena. That paraga of your lotus feet will be my decoration. Shobham, it will be so beautiful. Param atitaram means extremely. Aho, O Radhike, Bibrad Bhavishya Sikada Mamasarta Nama. Wearing the ornament of that paraga, I will consider that my head is now meaningful, otherwise it has no meaning. <clears throat> Tulsi Manjari is addressing Srimati Radhika as Sumuki, because she is in a Svatin Bhartrika mood. That means she has controlled Krishna and therefore she is so pleased. Svadin Bhartrika. You can repeat Svadin Bhartrika. She is so, so pleased. Her eyebrows and eyes are full of pleasure and her face resembles a full moon. At this time, she can give anything she can give any amount of mercy. Controlled by Srimati Radhika, Krishna had been experiencing so many moods. And when he embraced her, the kunkum powder from her breast, which was like the pollen of a lotus, came to his chest. Because he was perspiring at that time, the kunkum mixed with his perspiration and became like a paste. And later, when he placed the feet of Srimati Radhika on his chest, that kumkum paste came onto her feet. And now, when the Manjaris were laughing and joking, Srimati Radhika was also laughing, and she gave that kumkum to Rati Manjari by putting her feet on her forehead. Just imagine. Rati Manjari at once became overjoyed. She was thinking, Shimati Radhika's feet have come onto my head. I am so lucky. My head is so lucky. So as described earlier, however, just after that, Das Goswami's Antara Dasha broke. Tears began to fall from his eyes. And now he weeps, rolling on the bank of Radha Kunda in separation. Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Baladev Vidyabhushan have explained this. 
When a sadhak descends from antardasha, the internal state, uh, antardasha, to the bahya dasha, the external state, he deeply remembers what he has seen in his antardasha. And by such remembrance, he experiences intense eagerness. And at the same time, he becomes very humble. He thinks, the mercy of Krishna and Radha is so high. Their pastimes are so high that they are not even seen by Narad, Shukadev Goswami and Uddhav. How will I be able to have this? <clears throat> greed is such a thing, however. Now we're going to hear about greed. Important topic. Greed is such a thing, however, that the sadhak does not lose hope and eagerness to obtain that mercy. You know, many times we've heard Gurudev tell a mundane comparison, right? You remember what that was? Um, oh, for that. Yeah. Sees Right, it's in her wedding procession. And there's like millions of people there, and all over the world people are watching, and she's so beautifully dressed, and she's on the chariot with her uh, just newly married husband. And then what? who, who is it that's looking at, at, the, at, the, at her? It's the poor beggar on the street. Yeah, he's just a poor beggar kind of. Yeah, then what? Then he looks at her and he thinks, I'll marry her. Marry her, but he can never actually marry her. But that, yes. that eagerness is still there. Yeah, he he's seeing her, and he's thinking she's so beautiful. I want her to be my wife. <laughs> so Gurudev explains, this is absurd, but there's there's no possibility of that. But yet, he unrestrainedly begins to think that. She's so beautiful, I wish she was my wife. This is the example that Gurudev is giving in this connection. We'll hear how he's explaining this. But greed is such a thing that the sadhak does not lose hope and the eagerness to obtain that mercy. <clears throat> Srila Das Goswami, that's Raghunath Das Goswami, weeps in lamentation. O oh, Swamini, I am so wretched, I am so fallen, my only hope is your great mercy. You are even more merciful than Krishna. Only by having this utkanta and this mood, utkanta means eagerness, and this mood that one day you will surely have mercy upon me, only by having this utkanta, that one day you will surely have mercy upon me, only by this I am able to remain alive. <clears throat> I have explained the word sumuki, and I want to further explain the words rajat paraga patabasa vibhushanena. When that paraga which had come from Srimati Radhika. What's Paraga? Paraga. Is that dust or dust? Yes. And it's mixed. Mixed. <laughs> it's mixed. So when that Paraga, which had come from Srimati Radhika to the chest of Krishna, and then from there again onto the feet of Srimati Radhika, now came on to the head of Tulsi Manjari. It was like an ornament. That's why vibhushanena, the term vibhushana, means ornament, decoration. Yes. Rajat paraga patavasa vibhushanena. Next section is titled Radhika's Kunkum Paraga. What's paraga? Dust. Yes, the foot, foot dust. But here, it's called kunkum paraga, 
what comes from her feet, because kumkum are on her feet. So that's also paraga, right? Now, in the Venu Gita, there is another shloka about paraga. You know, the chapter called Venu Gita in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which canto? Tenth canto. Which chapter? 21. What are the chapters of the Ras Lila in the tenth canto? Yeah, beginning with 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Five chapters. So 21 is the first Geet, Venu Geet. It's the first of the five songs, the five Geets in Srimad Bhagavatam of the Gopis. Uh -huh. So the Venu Geet, Gurudev has given fully to us. Everyone should read the whole book, Venu Geet, and read the commentary of Srila Gurudev. <clears throat> which is so much presenting a lot of the commentary of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So in the Venu Gita, what is the subject matter? Krishna. And who's speaking the Venu Gita? Radhika is speaking the Venu Gita, uh, describing Krishna playing his flute, how it's affecting all the different inhabitants of Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Anyone else is speaking the Venu Gita also? The other gopis are also speaking. Yes. Yes. There's about 20 verses. And all different gopis are speaking about what they are noticing. Each one is uh, expressing how Krishna, when he plays on his Venu, on his flute, oh, such and such persons of the forest respond, or, or the, the waters of the Amuna respond, or the aborigine girls in the forest respond, like this, one after the other after the other, right? And Radhika, of course, she also prays to Giriraj Govardhan in that Venu Gita, and glorifies Giriraj as who? Haridas Varida the best of all servants of Hadi, and praying for the mercy of Giriraj. So, in that uh, Venu Gita, this is the 17th verse, uh, which is describing about Paraga. Mm -hmm. So, Purna Pulindya Urugaya Padabja Raga Shri Kum Kumena Dayata Stanamanditena Tad Darshana Smara Rujas Trinarushitena Limpantya Ananat Kucheshu Jahus Tad Adhim. So Srimati Radhika said, O Saki, these Pulindis, the young women who live in the forest, they are fully satisfied because they possess anurag for Sri Krishna within their hearts. So one thing about the Venu Gita. The main theme is that each gopi is seeing her own bhavs in everything. What they're feeling, they see that also these other entities and so forth are also feeling that. That is the thing about those personalities who are on that supreme platform, that they always have these overwhelming bhavs, but they also feel and see as if other entities are also appreciating just like they are, you see. So this is the verse in which the Pulindi girls, these are forest-dwelling girls, sometimes they're called like uh, tribal or aboriginal mm, drudge they also have, right, in the forest. So, and, <clears throat> and this verse is actually spoken by Srimati Radhika. So she says to her friend, her Saki, O oh, Saki, these Pulindis, the young women who live in the forest, they are fully satisfied because they possess anurag for Sri Krishna within their hearts, you see. So she's seeing that they have this 
mood in their hearts. And when they see our dear most beloved Shama Sundar, then the burning of spiritual lust, calm, arises within them, and their hearts are struck with the disease of attachment. She's calling this a disease. One of his beloveds had adorned her breast with red kumkum, which came off on Krishna's lotus feet. Sorry. One of his beloveds had adorned her breast with red kumkum, which came off on Krishna's lotus feet. And when Krishna roams through Vrindavan, the grass gets covered with his kumkum. The greatly fortunate Pulindi girls see it and they are immediately overwhelmed by the burning anguish of Cupid. They take this kumkum and smear it on their faces and their breasts. In this way, they alleviate the anguish of their lust. So Gurudev is now explaining this. <clears throat> Here we see a similarity. The Padabja rag, uh, foot dust, was actually the kumkum from Srimati Radhika's Sri Anga, or the dust or her divine body. Mm. So the, the dust that she's saying here, that the Palindi girls see, that has come off of Krishna's lotus feet, actually came from her breast. And Krishna's lotus feet then became uh, reddish from her, his feet being embraced by her. So here we see a similarity. The Padabja Rag uh, was actually the kumkum from Shrimati Radhika's Sri Anga, or her divine body. Shrimati Radhika had placed the feet of Krishna on her breast, and at that time her kumkum came upon his feet. And then in the early morning, as Krishna walked on the grass, <coughs> that kumkum came onto the grass. The dew on the grass then wet the kumkum and made it like a paste. And after that, the Pulinda Kanyas, the daughters of the Pulinda tribesmen, they came and took this paraga, this kumkum pollen, smeared it on their faces and other limbs, and they were thus relieved of the fire of lust in their hearts. So, likened to the rose, or lotus pollen, this same paraga patavasa, this same fragrant pollen was now like an alankar, an ornament for Tulsi Manjari. And she very proudly thought, that paraga of Radhika is now decorating my head. I'm reading this again. Likened to the rose or lotus pollen, the same paraga patavasa, this fragrant pollen, was now like an alankar, an ornament, for Tulsi Manjari. And she very proudly thought, that paraga of Radhika is now decorating my head. So at the same time, when she began to look in a mirror to see whether it was there or not, Das Goswami came in Bahya Dasha, and began to weep loudly. Dahya, bahya means external consciousness. So he and he began to weep loudly. O Sumuki, O Swadin Bhartrika Devi, you are so cheerful. I think, therefore, that you will be merciful to me. I know that I am so wretched and fallen, and thus I cannot have a sakshad. Darsha, direct darsha. So there are three stages. Spurti, Svapna, and Sakshad Darshan. What is Spurti? Vision. Momentary vision. And Svapna. Svapna means dream. And Sakshad Darshan direct darshan. 
So there are three stages, Spurti, Svapna, and Sakshat Darshan. And all these stages come only when the sadak enters Bhav Bhakti, not before, only in the stage of Bhav Bhakti. Spurti means that although apparently Krishna is not there, nothing is there. In deep vipralamba, deep vipralamba, the devotee sees Krishna has come. I'm talking with him. He is joking with me and doing vilas with me. And then at once the spurti goes away and the devotee begins to lament. This type of meeting is very brief. Spurti comes only in bhav avasta, in the stage of bhav. It only comes in that stage. When one is deeply in tadatma bhav, feeling oneness of heart with one's uh, object of love. Tada, tadatma is not such an easy thing to achieve. Uh, this oneness. We heard about this earlier. Tadatmic. Mm -hmm. So now, Gurudev is explaining there are four kinds of meeting. Shimati Vishnu Priya Devi, the wife of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she used to make very good preparations and give them to Sachi Ma. Sachi Mata would then think, my son should come and taste this. He comes and tastes and then goes away. And Sachi Ma considered, oh, I saw him, but actually he has not come. He is in Puri. How from such a far distance will he come and then return? I must have been seeing him in a dream. So uh, we've heard this before, how Sh uh, Shimati Sachi Devi every day, every day, Mahaprabhu comes there. She sees this Spurti, this Darshan of her son coming uh, and tasting all the preparations and then goes away. So, <clears throat> Srimati Sachi Mata, she always thought in this way. However, through Damodar Pandit, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told her, I really come, you should not think otherwise. Yes, so Damodar Pandit uh, was told by Mahaprabhu, you go and you tell my mother that she should not think that this is a dream. I really come. So, and similarly, when Raghunath Das Goswami was remembering that pastime of Radha and Krishna, it was actually seen by him. And now he is praying and weeping and rolling on the bank of Radha Kund. These subjects are not understood by ordinary devotees. <clears throat> the next level of meeting because this is a section called Four Kinds of Meeting. So the next level of meeting is Svapna, the dream. This meeting is more complete than that of a Spurti. Someone made a fire, so there's more heat. That was bundled for no heat now. Okay, so the next level of meeting is Svapna, dream. This meeting is more complete than that of a spurti. So spurti is very momentary, but svapna in dream, more complete. We see that so many persons are dreaming about Krishna, Gurudev, or Vrindavan. This may easily come. The dream of the neophyte is not what is indicated here, as I remember. Gurudev, so many devotees would try to tell Gurudev, Oh, Gurudev, I had such and such a dream. But the dream of a neophyte is not reality. It may be some mercy that is coming, but Gurudev says, I don't believe. 
So anyway, uh, the dream of the neophyte is not what is indicated here. Uh, the Svapna described here is of an advanced Rag Anug Sadak, and it also comes only at the stage of Bhav. It has been told in Ujvala Nilamani that within Spurti, within Spurti, Svapna and Sakshad Darshan, uh, It has been told in Ujvala Nilamani that within Spurti, Svapna, and Saksha Darshan, there are four kinds of Sambhog or meeting. First one is called Sam Sangshipta. Sangshipta. That means brief, very brief. Then Sankirtan. No, sorry, Sankirna. Sankirna. Narrow or limited. Then Sampanna, complete or perfect. And Samriddhiman, flourishing or fully enriched. The type of meeting depends on the sadak or Siddha. Now the third level of darshan is Sakshad darshan. The direct meeting. This Sambhog is Samriddhiman. We just read, Samriddhiman is like the fourth stage, flourishing, fully enriched, that kind of darshan. So, mm -hmm. here Das Goswami is speaking as though he was a neophyte or an ordinary sadhak. And that is why he prays for a dream and not uh, an and, and not a sporty. So he wants a dream and not a sporty. Why? Why does Raghunath Das want that? The sporty is momentary. Yes. Momentary. Yes. He, he, and we also just heard that there's four different stages. Brief, narrow or limited, complete or perfect, and flourishing or fully enriched. So... Here, he's speaking as though he was a neophyte or an ordinary sadhak. <clears throat> and that is why he prays for a dream and not a spurti. He's thinking, I am not so qualified that a spurti will come. Because spurti comes to the more advanced sadhak bhakta. But I'm not like that. So will you be so pleased as to give me a dream? And in that dream... Will you give me those lotus feet whose paraga went to Krishna and then from Krishna came again to your lotus feet? Those feet should be kept on my head so that my head will be uttamanga, the highest part of my body. If I don't get it, then my head is bogus. It has no use. <laughs> now the gopis prayed similarly. Yeah. In this, also, this he's telling another verse from the Vena Geet that the gopis also prayed similarly. They said, One's eyes are successful if he can see Krishna's lotus feet. Your eyes are successful if you can see Krishna's lotus feet and lotus face, actually, sorry. <laughs> One's eyes are successful if he can see Krishna's lotus face, can see his smiling, his playing on his flute, his crooked sidelong glances which are seeking someone, and his crooked neck turning behind him. Baladev is walking far ahead with so many cows and friends, and he is watching Krishna look toward Radhika and the gopis. So Balaram is also watching where Krishna is glancing. Mm -hmm. The gopis are also looking towards Krishna with crooked, sidelong glances. Moreover, Radha and Krishna are looking at each other. If anyone sees Radha and Krishna 
at this time, his eyes are successful. What are his eyes? Successful. Yes. Who has told that fact? The gopis. And what the gopis tell is fact. Yes. So, if anyone sees Radha and Krishna at this time, his eyes are successful. So Das Goswami is thinking in a like manner, that one's head is useless if Radhika's paraga does not come upon it. He is weeping. <coughs> what to do? <coughs> Alas, O oh Devi, you are Sumuki. What does Sumuki mean? Beautiful face. You are Sumuki. Your Priyatama is under your control. Now you can give anything. So I am praying that you will make my head successful. That's the prayer, the verse we read. Kadama masarta nama. If I can receive that paraga from your lotus feet on my head, then my name, Rati Manjari, will also be successful and meaningful. How? How will it be successful and meaningful? Rati, the name Rati Manjari, Rati refers to various kinds of vilas, uh, various types of pastimes. This Rati is not the same Rati that means Bhav, the first stage of praying, because that's also, Bhav is also called Rati. But Gurudev is saying, no, this, is, this Rati is not referring to that that first stage of praying. It refers to anurag, which is a much later stage of praying. Praying comes first. Sneha, pranai. Different, there's two different orders in which this is recited. Prem, sneha, pranai, rag, anurag. Sometimes man is put before that. So, so this rati is not the same rati that means bhav, the first stage of praying. It refers to anurag and the stages after that, namely bhav, mahabhav, and so on. So this rati refers to radhika's rati. Radhika's Rati for Krishna. That's why Raghunath Das Goswami has this name, Rati Manjari, because it's referring to whose Rati? Srimati Radhika's for Krishna. Yes. So her Mahabhav towards Krishna, this Rati refers to Radhika's Rati. Manjari means Shobha or beauty. Hmm? The word manjari can also mean shobha. Shobha means beauty. Do you know that we sing that word every single night in the Gore Arctic? Shobha. The beautiful Arctic ceremony. Yes. So, Rati Manjari, therefore, means the beauty of Radhika's Rati for Krishna. That's what Rati Manjari means. What does it mean? The beauty of Radhika's Rati for Krishna. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami thus prays, if that paraga exchange during your vilas with Krishna comes to my head, Oh, then my name, Rati Manjari, has significance and meaning, otherwise not. Now, at this point, there are a few questions being asked to Gurudev 
by the devotees who are present there listening to Gurudev's Katha. <clears throat> they ask this question. You have mentioned Swarup Siddhi and Vastu Siddhi. Swarup Siddhi comes while in this body. Is that in Bhav Bhakti or in Prem Bhakti? So you understand the question? What's the question? Does Swarup Siddhi come in Bhav Bhakti or Prem Bhakti from this mm. body? Mm -hmm. Now, Srila Gurudev says, <clears throat> it comes in Bhav Bhakti <clears throat> at the beginning of Prem Bhakti, Swarup Siddhi. In Bhav Bhakti, at the beginning of Prem Bhakti. Vastu Siddhi does not manifest at that time. What's Vastu Siddhi? Vastu Siddhi is when that devotee actually takes birth in Krishna's pastimes and actually is endowed with their eternal spiritual body. So, <clears throat> Gurudev is saying that Vastu Siddhi, because the question is uh, that you've mentioned Swarup Siddhi and also Vastu Siddhi. Swarup Siddhi comes while in this body. Is that in Bhav Bhakti or in Prem Bhakti? So the question is about Swarup Siddhi. And Gurudev is saying it comes in Bhav Bhakti, at the beginning of Prem Bhakti, while you're in this body. Vastu Siddhi does not manifest at that time. When Bhav matures into Prem, when Bhav matures into Prem, then Vastu Siddhi manifests. When Prem comes, then the devotee meets Krishna on the planet where he is playing in his pastimes. And even then, there is some sadhana to be performed. Still. The devotee will have to associate with Krishna's Nitya Siddha Parikara. We've heard that before. So now, our journey, this is, this is us, our little jivatma, has wandered throughout the universes for probably millions of universal creations and destructions. And we came in contact with the pure Vaishnava. And then we came onto the path of bhakti, and then we became attracted always to being in Sadhu Sangha, and then we adopted the process. Shraddha came into our heart, and then we adopted the process in Sadhu Sangha of doing uh, the um, regulated practice, huh? Bhajana Kriya. Yes, Bhajan Kriya. Regulated practice of practicing the 64 limbs of bhakti, the nine processes of bhakti. So in the bhajan kriya process, then the anartanivritti process is going on. It's continually going on, going on, going on. And anartas are being vanquished from the heart in course of time. Then nashtak praishu avadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhakti or bhagavati naishtiki. And then as those anartas are being eliminated, not fully, but to a large extent, then comes the uh, firm faith. Uh, firm faith. At that time, nishta, uh, in the process of bhakti, becomes very firm. And then, in course of time, we continue, continue, Krishna ranges, whether it's this life, next life, combination of lifetimes, we continue to move forward, and eventually, by Sadhu Sangha and very deep impressions, we come to the lotus feet of a Vrajrasik Mahabhagwat Vaishnava, somewhere in our journey. 
and hear from that personality and some scars, impressions come into our heart, also combined with the previous lives and so forth. And then one advances and gradually there becomes a very firm uh, desire. Uh, you can say greed, uh, lobha, comes. Uh, and one enters into the stage of ruchi, uh, where taste, so much taste is there. This whole journey is all described in the Madhurya Kadambani by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Very essential book to understand and to read. So, at that point, uh, in Sadhu Sangha, continually, the devotee is now rising completely beyond the modes of material nature. Although they're in this body, uh, but they have advanced uh, in their bhakti, and through this bhakti process, they become nirgun, they become advanced above the modes of material nature. Uh, so, gradually, one goes further, and from ruchi, one enters into the stage of asakti, which means that very deep attachment. And described there that there's two stages of asakti. The first stage is attachment to the process of bhajan, very deep attachment. And then that's called attachment to bhajan. And then, then in the higher stage, just prior to the stage of bhav, there is attachment to bhajaniya. Now attachment to the object of your bhajan, Sri Krishna, Srimati Radhika, and so forth, it manifests. And then comes what? Rati, bhav. And in the stage of bhav, now swarup siddhi comes. Because in the prior stage of asakti, there are spurtis of one's spiritual form coming into the heart. Then in the stage of bhav, there is a very, very powerful and direct uh, realization. Because why? Because it's descended down from the spiritual world, from the hearts of the eternal associates. That's bhav bhakti means it's descending down from their heart into our heart. Shuddha sattva visheshatma prema suryam susamya bhak ruji bischitta mashrinya kridaso bhava uchute. This is called bhav. This is the definition of bhav. Now in that stage of bhav, Gurudev is just describing here because the devotee is asking the question about swarup siddhi. In that stage of bhav, swarup siddhi is there and it's deepening. Uh, so Gurudev is explaining when bhav matures into prem, then vastu siddhi manifests. When praying comes, then the devotee meets Krishna on the planet where he is playing in his pastimes, and even then there is some sadhana to be performed. So although reaching the stage of praying, actually manifesting, uh, taking birth in Braj, on Krishna's planet in another universe where he's performing his pastimes. But some sadhana still has to be performed. Uh, and the devotee will have to associate with Krishna's Nitya Siddha Parikar, his Nitya Siddha associates, Parikar. In that, that is how our Prem and going through the stages of Prem will happen. And that's called sadhana, but Gurudev is, it's not actually sadhana. But he says still there's some sadhana to be performed. Because in the association of those Nitya Siddha Gopis. Now, what is the example of this? Do we have an example of this in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto? Yes, we do. There are many groups of Gopis who are taking birth in Braj during Krishna's Bhav Lila pastimes. And they're also described various Yotaki, uh, Yotaki and Ayotaki. Some Gopis come alone, and some gopis come in a group. What's an example of gopis coming in a group? Uh, the gopis who are performing austerities so that they can meet with Krishna. With which particular ones? Um, I'm forgetting their names. 
the ones who do who Christians sell their clothes. I mean, yeah, but no, no. Those gopis, prior to that, in their previous life, that's what is being explained by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And there's different names of different gopis from different groups. One of them is Lord Ramachandra in the Dandakaranya forest. And who was there? Great sages. Very old, bearded, great sages. And it's also described that they were actually chanting the Gopal Mantra in Treta Yuga. And they became attracted to Krishna. So, when they saw Lord Ram, they were attracted to him and he could understand, he could, he could sense that they're attracted to me in the mood of Madhurya Rasa. And he told to them, in this body, in this life, you cannot have that, but in future. And they took birth in Braj as young Gopi girls. And uh, there's some other groups also. Do you remember <coughs> any of the others? Personified Vedas. Yes. They're called the Shruti Chari. Shruti Chari Gopis. They also took birth. Uh, they wanted to experience Krishna's pastimes. Any others? We got the Rishi Charis, the Shruti Charis. Are the wives of the Brahmins? No, 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 no. They never, they, the wives of the Brahmins. That's, see, because in, in the tenth canto, they're only meeting Krishna, but they've taken birth right. outside of the immediate Braj village, like that. And they're, they have a Brahminical, you know... Um, but do they, take, do they take birth again as gopis, or is that the end of the... Maybe I'm getting confused. Not, the no, the they have to wait until their next That's life. I mean, their until, next yes. Life. In that, because also, Krishna, see, it was improper, mm -hmm. according to the etiquette, because mm -hmm. they're from Brahminical, right. and Krishna is from the Vaishya. Yeah. So that was not allowed that they could be with Krishna. But through that, then they attained Krishna. That's why, in the song that we sing, Jai Radhe Jai Krishna Jai Vrindavan, mm -hmm. there is one verse which is talking about two different categories. Mm -hmm. Two different categories of ladies in female form who had the opportunity to attain Bhakti and Prem. Uh, they were in Vrindavan. One is the wives of the Kalyanag. Right? Nagaputnis. Um, I'm trying to remember the words of the song. Dvijapatni Jaya. Naga, Jaya Dvijapatni Jaya. Nagakanya Gan. Yes, Nagakanya, the daughters of the snakes. So, Dvijapatni means those wives of the Brahmanas. Then it says, Bhaktite Jahara Pailo Govinda Charan. By Bhakti, they attained the lotus feet of Govinda. See, so they're examples. But in the case of the, the young Gobi girls, very young, who were doing austerities in this same month, because this is the month after Kartik. And this is when, who were doing austerities? The sages that met Lord Ram? No, no. The young gopis. The young gopis. Okay. Now we're in Krishna Leela, right? And the young gopis are doing what? They're going to the bank of the Yamuna, and they're worshipping who? Katyayani. Katyayani Devi, right? You can actually go to that very place in Braj. Such a sweet place. It's outside of Vrindavan. And uh, so, and they're praying to Goddess Katyayani. But who is Goddess Katyayani? Yogamaya. Yeah, she's actually Yogamaya. Mm -hmm. And they're praying for what? What is their prayer? Krishna is their husband. Yes, we want to have the son of Nanda Maharaj as our husband. So they did for the whole month. That's the Katyayani Vrat, right? That they did. Then what happened? 
Krishna stole their clothes. But first, something else had to happen that Krishna even came there. Otherwise, Krishna would not have come. Do you know why Krishna came? Because Shimati, the, uh, these young gopis had been doing their vrat the whole month and bathing in the cold weather in the Yamuna. And on the last day of their vrat, they wanted to have a celebration. And they invited Shimati Radhika and her companions. These are all Nitya Siddha personalities, right? Mm -hmm. And they came. And that's why Krishna actually came. So Radhika and the other gopis were there bathing in the Yamuna, and that's when Krishna took their clothes, climbed up into the tree. He had a couple of other cowherd boys with him, and then he began joking with them. <laughs> and they began to chastise him. Why are you making us go through so much suffering? But they were actually enjoying so much. So that pastime was the fulfillment of all of those gopis who, were, who came there in that birth from various times and places. And all were able to perform this vrat and to be awarded by Krishna uh, what they were praying for. Not exactly that they would, Krishna would become their husband directly, but that they would have the parakiras with Krishna. And he told them, very soon, the full moon nights of the autumn season are coming, and on that time, your desires will be fulfilled. So these are examples. <clears throat> so, yeah, so Gurudev is answering that question, and he is saying that when Prem comes, then the devotee meets Krishna on the planet where he is playing in his pastimes. And even then there is some sadhana, in parentheses, to be performed. And the devotee will have to associate with Krishna's Nitya Siddha Parikar. So then another question is asked. When one takes birth from the womb of a gopi on the planet where Krishna is performing his pastimes, is that called Vastu Siddhi? Then Srila Gurudev says, at that time, Vastu Siddhi begins. It is not yet manifest but one has entered the class or the course of Vastu Siddhi. So this principle can be compared with that of Diksha. What we consider to be Diksha is not actually so. Oh yes, I took second initiation. Yes, I took Diksha. Yes, I received mantras. But what Gurudev is saying here is that uh, what we consider to be Diksha yeah, what we consider to be Diksha is not actually so. We have only entered into the school of Diksha. So there's a big difference between entrance examination and getting into a university and putting in your time. Somebody here knows about that. It takes years, and then you get your piece of paper, right? So here Gurudev is saying, as Diksha is a course. So we have only entered into the school of Diksha. Diksha is a course. This is also. It has only started. This is also means for those gopis taking birth and brudge. It's only a course. It has only started. So at first, Praying comes. When praying comes, then Vastu Siddhi manifests. You can't have Vastu Siddhi without having attained praying. Even in this high stages of Bhav, that's all so beautifully described there in Madhuri Kadambini. That point at which the devotee is awarded Krishna's darshan, and then at that time, Gurudev says actually, praying cannot come in this body. Prem is so powerful, the body will just be torn apart. We cannot tolerate Prem. So Yoga Maya knows exactly at that moment that devotee is now ready and she transports him to another universe where Krishna's pastimes are going on and he takes birth from the womb of a gopi 
and now has his spiritual body, but only uh, he now has praying, just the very beginning stages of praying. Now there's a course that needs to happen. So, yes, when praying comes, then Vastu Siddhi manifests. And at that time, one enters the group uh, of gopis. And after that, sneha and all the other stages of praying that are possessed by the gopis, they come in her. In other words, when one will have some connection with Krishna in Leela, then sneha will come. As well as all the subsequent stages, for example, if Krishna is not present, there can be no man. No man can come. That stage of praying is called man, jealous anger. So if Krishna is not present, there can be no man. All these stages become manifest by entering Leela. Have to actually enter the Leela. That's what Vastu Siddhi means. Then the question is asked, I'm just uh, going to complete this because there's just a little bit left and then we're done with this verse 11. So then the question, but Brihad Bhagavatamrita states that as soon as Gopakumar reached Krishna, then Krishna immediately embraced him. You know about that. You know, there's a painting done of that also. The story of Gopakumar. So now Gurudev says, no, it was not like that. Gopakumar first had the association of Uddhav and Narada Rishi in Dwarka, and there he heard everything about Sakya, Vatsalya, and the gopis. And then, by the permission of Uddhav and Narad, he entered Vrindavan. And until that time, he was in Swarup Siddhi. Or it may be that he was in the lowest stage of Vastu Siddhi. So when one is, when one in Sakya Ras reaches there, he will have to be met by a Saka, and he will have to take birth from the womb of a Gopi. So Gopakumar had a special situation. He had taken birth from the womb of a Gopi at Govardhan, on this earthly plane, right? And as a Gopa, he took birth. So for him, that stage was solved here in this world, and the rest was solved there. Also, he had the association of a guru who was Krishna himself. Do you know that? What was that person's name? Jayanta. Krishna himself came in this form in Vrindavan to Gopakumara. And by that powerful association, then he attained this. So, also he had the association of a guru who was Krishna himself, Jayanta. That was also solved here on this plane. What would have been solved there, it was solved here. In our case, however, we will have to pass through all the different categories. Then the last question is, is Sakshat Darshan possible in this world? <clears throat> Gurudev says, it is possible anywhere. Narad received darshan of Narayan, although very briefly. And even in Bhav Bhakti, therefore, one may have that, Sakshat Darshan in Bhav Bhakti. Without praying, however, there is no real, no real Sakshat Darshan. So that ends this commentary for this verse 11. Amazing. Wow. You only heard like a little less than half. We should see what was before on the other day. So, how fortunate we are that Ravanath Das Goswami has written this and we are hearing all of this. I'm just reading that verse 11 one more time. Swapne pikim sumukite charanam bujata rajat paraga patavasa vibhushanena 
शोभाम पराम अतिराम अहोत्तमांगम बिब्रद भविष्य तिकदा मम सार्थ नाम ओ ब्यूटीफुल फेस्ड वन व्हेन इवन इन अ ड्रीम विल आई बाय डेकोरेटिंग माय हेड विथ द स्प्लेंडेड परफ्यूम पाउडर फ्रॉम योर लोटस फीट attain the goal of my life and as i am starting to do i'm giving just wetting everyone's appetite for tomorrow's verse verse number 12 raghunath das goswami is writing amritabdi rasa paya prayais tava nupura sinjitai ha kada मम कल्याणी बाध्यर्यम अपनेष्यते ओ ब्यूटीफुल वन व्हेन विल द साउंड ऑफ योर एंकल बेल्स स्प्रिंकलिंग ड्रॉप्स फ्रॉम एन ओशन ऑफ नेक्टर क्योर माय डेफनेस रिपीट ओ ब्यूटीफुल वन ओ ब्यूटीफुल वन व्हेन विल द साउंड ऑफ योर एंकल बेल्स sprinkling drops from an ocean of nectar sprinkling drops from an ocean of nectar cure my deafness cure my deafness gor prema namo bhagavate shri raghunath das ko swami pad ki jai shri guru dev ki jai shri shri rupanuga guru varg ki jai sachinandan gor hari ki jai nitai gor prema You want to sing one Maha Mantra in short? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna,
Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Nama Vansha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vedacha Patitanam Bhavanevu Vaishnavi Namo Nama